what was the biggest challenge? Because this is not like the corner of, you know, an office. This is like a building. It's like a real operation. Uh, the biggest challenge for me was uh, calling people and asking for money. Something I'm not used to. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I bought the building originally myself. But it's going to, you know, we still needed like $3 million to to build it all out and to do everything. So I had to call, you know, Tim Armstrong and Brett Gruitz and Kevin Lyman and, and all my, you know, I only wanted to call bands mm-hmm. and, and people in the music industry. And, you know, and like people stopped calling you back and, okay, well, I could give you this much. And I feel it was like, it was really hard. Then I got Fletcher to do it for me because I figured he could fucking force it at anyone. Right. And he got, he went through the same thing. He's like, man, this is hard. You know, like I'm not getting calls back from people. Like they always call me back. <laughs> and the funny thing is people don't trust me for some reason. Uh, like, Oh, fat Mike's putting together this, this place. Oh, Jesus. What a disaster this is going to be. But well, I don't know if you're joking or not, but I mean, you have a very strong track record of doing shit. You're not a flake. Well, but people still see me that way because I do start a lot of things and finished. I, I finished like I did Rocky against Bush. You know, I spent yeah. years doing that and it was very successful, but then I stopped it. I didn't want to do that anymore. I don't want to move well, on. What are you going to do? Rocky against Bush in 2021? Yeah. Well, just keeping a political organization, that's not yeah. my life goal. I want to make music and, and yeah. spread happiness to people. Uh, doing politics is not spreading happiness. That's fucking for sure. No. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I'm a known uh, alcohol and drug user, you know, and even though I barely do anymore, it doesn't matter what you get penned oh you're not sober no i'm not sober and you want me to trust i'm supposed to trust you with my money i mean but how many people do business over drinks you know yeah yeah i I know that's a pretty normal thing oh i know uh which is so this place has been very stressful that way because i footed the bill for like the when the city the city kept uh the the biggest hardship there's this rock that vegas is built on called klieg or something and it's harder than cement. Mm. And it took three months for them to, d- to dig, uh, to get pipes for a better water system, for a sprinkler system. And it put us so behind. And there, there was just nothing we could do about it. And so, yeah, I had to put the bill for all this, for all employees and all this construction, all kinds of shit. So it got pretty stressful. But now... Uh, Every weekend is doing better and better. And and like I said before, it's just the joy on people's faces is it's everything. How did you pick Vegas as the location? Why not LA? Uh, Vegas is a place that you don't have to twist people's arms to go to. Uh, and what I did notice is, you know, with, with uh, punk rock bowling and, there's so many music festivals here now when we were here mm-hmm. in Viva and people go to Vegas and and people want something to do in Vegas besides gamble. I mean, it's it, the amount of people that come here every year. It's just crazy. And people so, go there just to shop and eat now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, or, you know, see the world's biggest ball of twine. I don't know. Right. They, they have things here. They have, tourist objections and the mob museum, they do like a thousand people a day and there's no real mob fans around the world that are going to mob shows all the time. <laughs> right. right. Uh, and, you know, and a big part of it was like people said, New York or LA where it would be a fucking fortune. Yeah. To get a building and to get a place like we are. And a shittier experience for people because think about like parking and travel and all that. Like, I would way rather go in Vegas than New York or LA. Yeah. We have, you know, we have, we're building a skate ramp next to the place where we can have shows and we're next to the freeway and we're in in a, in the opportunity zone. So Mm. uh, we can do what the fuck we want. We're not right next to a strip club, you know, and uh, (laughs) it's where we belong. I mean, right. (laughs) That's right. So Vegas seemed like the perfect place. Uh, 
And and Vegas, it I would argue that it's the most punk rock city in in uh I'm just gonna say it, um, North America. Okay, tell me why. Uh in the eighties when No Effects used to play here, we used to play in the middle of the desert. They do parties in the middle of the desert. They did it for years, just yeah. with the generator. And always do their own shows. And to this day, it's a 24 hour city, which is so rare. You know, you go to a show here and you can, you'll see a band go on at 4 AM. People are just partying all night long. And, and there's like less rules in Vegas, you know, cops like let shit go. And it's a fucking dangerous, weird fucking city where <laughs> yeah, all, makes sense. always lived. Feel like there's a G.G. Allen lurking around every corner. <laughs> <laughs> there, it's just it's a sketchy place. You can't trust anyone, and uh, I think it's the perfect.